podcasting from the Chicagoland area. This is Game On with Jackson Stewart, where we discuss men's lifestyle, focusing on sex, fitness, relationships, business, and more. We'll be interviewing the best of the best, the hot shots, and the rising stars in the worlds of modeling, fitness, cooking, and more. Influencers who are discussing keeping it sexy while at the top of their game. I'm your host, Jackson Stewart. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the game. What's up, guys? This is Uzu Sweet. You're listening to Game On with Jackson Stewart. Some players manage to both take your breath away and put you at ease simultaneously. Their grace, intelligence, and style excites, interests, and inspires, all while giving you a look into the challenging road of their success. Tonight's guest is exactly such a player. Kay Cochran is a force of nature in the modeling world. Born and raised in the Philippines, she resides in California while working in the medical field when not in front of the camera. Cochran is passionate, inspirational, and tonight's player on Game On. Everyone, you've heard the introduction. Now join me in welcoming to the show the worldly, the intelligent, and the stunningly beautiful Kay Cochran. Kay, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me on your show, Jack. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, Kay is a perfect example of a great guest. We've been emailing back and forth. I think we got about 15 emails between us each, and we finally got this so. nailed down. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but she's definitely been worth the effort, so we're glad to have you. Oh, thank you so much. Let's start off with let the audience know what platform they can find you and by what username. So my um, right now I'm in different platforms. I am also in Facebook, but most likely my Facebook is for family and friends. But my social media is in my Instagram, which is K Paul Magoite which is like everywhere that you can search me on. And even you can use my um, model and influencer name, which is Kate Cochran in Google. You can search my biography there. And also you can search some of the photos of all the photographers that I am collaborated with here in California and also some from Philippines. Now, you just mentioned the Philippines, and we had talked a little bit before the interview. You are originally from the Philippines, correct? Yeah, yes, I am from Philippines. Um, I was from the Pollock City, but most likely I am back and forth with Cebu City and the Pollock. Now, how did you enter the business of modeling? How did, um, you know, what's the road from the Philippines to becoming, you know, essentially an international model? Oh, me? That's so funny, though, because um, one of the product that I used, like beauty products, it's so funny. They use the international fashion model, but I didn't consider myself like being an international fashion model. But for them, since you are a model or influencer here in the United States, they call us as like, oh, she's a international model. Plus, considering with that, it's like, you know, you being in a different magazine and then also in billboards, they like probably call you as a fashion model. So I have started being a model. So when now back in the Philippines, I started with this um, local photographer. He asked me like, oh, can we do a photo shoot with you? It looks like you want to be a model and I said like that time I'm not really like into that modeling thing when I found out like oh I can be a model but not like in my mind like oh I can be as influencer now here in the United States being a model or doing this different type of photo shoots and collaborations with magazines and billboards so um, here in the United States I have started when I was in Westfield Mall in San Francisco and one of these um, 
I think he is a Persian hairdresser and he found me walking and he was like, hey, you look like a Filipina, do you model? And then that's the start. And he used me as their um, model for hair. And become that, I started with my social media and then my social media, I work with collaborations with different um, photographers here and there. And then that's the start. And my first magazine was the Pinay Magazine, which is really big right now here in the United States, all over the country, which is, there is big billboards coming out for marketing, for different interviews, for different models, but most likely are Filipinas, celebrities from the Philippines and the local artists here in the United States. I love that story. So you were, you were a mall rat getting your Cinnabon and your... <laughs> 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 yeah, your, it's it's your, a long journey. Yeah, your your ears pierced or you know whatever it is people do at the mall nowadays, and you got discovered. And I think that's a great story. So, yeah. Um, uh, what challenges have you found in the business for you particularly? I mean, are there certain obstacles that were along the road from you know the Philippines to? getting discovered in the mall to where you're at now on billboards. Give me, give us like three challenges that you've come up against and, uh, and, and how you, how you deal with them. Oh, the first challenge that I have, um, you know, here for being a, like a normal person to become a model in the United States for us or for me as a Filipina, when you become a model, it's like, hey there is a lot of beautiful women gorgeous women around the world around the philippines but you as a from this normal walking a person who walk a girl who walk in the mall and then someone like discover you as being a model and then they think you look like a model and um, the challenge for me is like because of the social media right now, the social media norms, which is what is gorgeous between a normal, beautiful girl. Like for me, it's like a big competition. You know, it's a lot of every time like I got um, this type of like interview or one will offer me like, hey, can we put you in the magazine? Hey, can we? Um, make you our endorser for a brand or a salon. I am also a, a salon model in San Francisco. And then I was just like, hey, why you want me? And I was like, the question was like, why not? You're beautiful. For me, it's like, no, I'm not. I don't, ha I have that a little bit of insecurities of myself because of the social media right now. You know, the like you think like beautiful is like if you can see all the women in social media like kardashians you know like for me it's like those type of people are beautiful but from these photographers that i work with they were like you're beautiful you're you have a great eye of a camera that when we look at the camera you look like a celebrity kind of like that thing and i was like okay but you know it's a overwhelming at the beginning and then aside of that the second part is now that because of this social media norm that being a, like look like a Kardashian it's like for me it's hard to catch up with all this beautiful and gorgeous women but for me it's like being a model is not a competition because we have individuality you know like She's beautiful in different way. She is beautiful in different way. So for me, it's like kind of like thing that scares me sometimes. Like, oh, maybe modeling is not for me. But for everybody, don't stop. Maybe you are so lucky that they will always tell me some of my friends, even my workmates, even my husband. You know, she was, he was always telling me, um, you know, you're beautiful. So for me, it's like, oh, thank you so much, you know? Well, and I think that that's, that's so, 
important and it, it's amazing that you bring that up and i i really want to applaud that because you know one of the things about the show is that i really like to present that guests influencers you know um social media celebrities that you guys are just you guys are people you know and not yes. not to not to take away from obviously your amazing achievements and i will join everybody else Kay, and say you are a very beautiful woman um <laughs> <laughs> but it's you're you're a person you wake up yes you, you know, yeah you, you you brush your teeth you got to get dressed mm -hmm. and and so i I'm, I'm glad you touched on that because i think people just see the quote unquote polished side of you and they think that that's your life you're like every part of your life is glamorous and you have no problems and you're always beautiful and you know you don't even know what a mall is like because you have people to go to the mall for you even though that's where you got discovered yeah but <laughs> you know I'd, so i think that's great and i really want people to realize that every guest on here um has worked their asses off yes. to get where they are and and continue to work that hard you know i mean it's not you know every guest has told me it's it's a constant competition against other people or themselves so i you know i totally applaud that you you mentioned that when you're when you're on the grind you know when it when when kay cochran because i'm not gonna butcher your beautiful filipina name so i'm gonna call you kay cochran <laughs> i would feel so bad um when kay cochran's on the grind you know you're oh. you're up and you're <laughs> You know, you're Thank you're you. in your element. What is your day like? Like, what time do you get up? Do you go to the gym? What do you have for breakfast? What do you start content, etc.? Okay, so my day to day life is just like a normal person. Of course, I am a person and I'm a human being. Like going to work, I usually work. I mean, my work time schedule is from eight to five i have i'm a manager here in california so i manage a clinic and then um during the weekend that's also my time when i do my photo shoots like i'm in the next few weeks i do have a summer shoots with um one it's from either he's a guy from chicago actually that coming to california to do summer shoots so my day-to-day life it's just like a simple one i wake up i usually wake up at 4 30 in the morning and then or 5 a.m and do my just like do my filipino coffee which is gopico this is really really the common famous coffee in the philippines and uh, go from there it's just like go to work i have my daily work like I do the billing, I do managing the clinic, I do um, scheduling with my bosses at the time, my doctor's schedules, and then, yeah, it's just like a pretty simple day-to-day -day life. But um, during the weekend, that's the time like I can do either travel or I can do um, modeling. What is your favorite part of the business? My favorite part of the business is, it's so funny, I can tell this, it's just like, you know, when you do modeling or collaborate with products or this company, small companies and big companies, being a model, you can get for free. It's so funny, but it's like, <laughs> you can get this stuff like free. And I was like, geez. And every time like I receive a lot of, um, hey, we want you to be a model for this, collaborators. Because I know social media right now, there's a lot of fakes as well. Like if they're going to go like, oh, we have to collaborate with you, but you have to pay for this and that. But I'm, I'm happy that the companies that I'm working with or even photographers that I'm working with, it's like sponsorships. And it's really good. It's for me, it's like an advantage of being a model or influence. I mean, influencer, it just makes me like, oh, this is amazing. And being part of like in social media right now, even like for me, it's a big competition. I can still get the advantage of having free freebies and something like that. Yeah. What's your least favorite? 
my least not getting, favorite. Not getting something free. <laughs> my least favorite is when after the photo shoots is so tiring. Like I did one photo shoot um, in San Francisco and it's a street um, photo shoot. It's like, geez, that three hours shoot is really tiring. You have to go different places and different costumes, different clothes that you have to wear. And I was like, geez, this is crazy. But I was like, but my friends are telling me because like when I asked me like, hey, how's your Sunday? And my, my, and my answer is like, tiring. It's like, why are you tired? And I, my answer is like, I do a shoe with three hour shoe, but it's like really, really tiring. And then everybody's like, my God, I wish my life is like yours. Like become a model and post it, that's it. Like, you know, but it's really tiring. But the, most of the day, uh, most of the time, I mean, it's like, I love what I'm doing. You know, it's, um, it's a part of my life now to become a one of the influencers around the world, we call it, or maybe, you know, a uh, simple Filipina from Philippines and become a model in the United States. You know, because in the Philippines is like we have also this um, norm that you will not be a model if you are not that gorgeous. We have a level of what is beautiful and what is not. But nowadays, it's like I consider myself maybe, wow, I'm so lucky that I got this side gig now that I can make money as well. Now, is that... That level of beauty that you said exists in the Philippines, is it influenced by American quote unquote standard of beauty or is it purely, you know, uh, a kind of based off of, for lack of a better way of putting it, Filipino standards of beauty? I think the Filipino standards of beauty is high. According to our recent Miss Universe is like, Filipino type of beauty. If you have a white skin, you are beautiful. But if you have a dark skin, you are not that beautiful. But here in the United States is like, wow, if you have this type of skin color, like tan, or we call it morena, we call it here, it's morena. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. in my country, it's morena, or you have this tan skin, you are beautiful everybody loves your skin which is like the standards of beauty in the philippines i think it's different from here like that's why i was just like the competition of beauty when in terms to you know the standards of beauty in the philippines when you say like you're you're a beauty queen you should be beautiful in every way like skin but you know it's like this type of um standards right now is i think it's influenced since um five years ago when this you know this instagram facebook is out or something like that like you should be because of this selfie thing when you are beautiful when you're doing your selfie then you are beautiful but there is a lot of platforms as well that it considered like i mean even in um, social media like facebook and instagram like when you have a dark skin, you're beautiful. You have to accept that this is your skin. Like me, I'm a morena. So like no matter what, before I was like, I want to be white because I want to be beautiful. But right now I consider myself, like, wow, now I'm beautiful because people can see me as beautiful. Or even I myself, like I have insecurity sometimes, like I don't feel like I'm beautiful, but at least people who love me or people around me, saying that you're gorgeous already no matter what you don't need all the surgeries and stuff like that so for me as influencer i i consider as well like hey you should be yourself don't take seriously about social media norm right now that people think that you're gonna be beautiful if you have everything done to yourself you know yeah, and something else that you, you know, you mentioned how your friend said, oh, like, you know, to have your life. And, but then, you know, 
literally every guest I've had on the show, their lives are, are it's a lot of work, more work than, you know, and it's a different schedule than like nine to five jobs. So I think that uh, that's kind of a mis, misperception, I think, of that people think, you know, oh, you're beautiful, you're on Instagram, you're a model, your life is easy, when it's usually yeah. probably the direct opposite, you know, and mm -hmm. so, Okay, what's uh what's next for you? I know you had mentioned some billboards and some magazine shoots. What's next for for Kay Cochran? Well, the next ones that I am getting for sure this lined up for this year is like more photo shoots for this magazine that is I am working with right now. I mean, it's not a close deal yet, but it's um it's a European magazine that I have to work with, and then. Um, another companies that I am collaborating with from Canada. I think I posted it in my Instagram that this company is working with me, but they're from Canada, but I never met the owner yet. I only do the marketers, but it's great. They're really amazing company that I am so excited to work with. And um, in the next couple months, I mean, maybe I'm going to be in the, um, what they call this in Las Vegas so for sure in the one of the billboards in Las Vegas as well and also in Los Angeles which is in LA in keeping with the theme of sexiness on the show Kay what is the sexiest thing about you I think for me is my personality I don't consider the sexy thing is what's in my body I think the sexy thing that I can consider myself is my personality. I'm a funny person. I think some of my friends, they can laugh with my jokes or, you know, it's being a Filipina. We are also considered like a funny people. There's a lot of comedians in, in Philippines, but I'm not considering myself. I'm a comedian, but I think my personality <laughs> is the sexy thing for me. I don't pin pinpoint myself like oh my hips oh my kind of like that no it's not just um for me it's not the physical beauty that i can tell that i am sexy maybe i can tell like i'm sexy because of my personality what makes a man sexy to oh you <laughs> what <laughs> is a man <laughs> makes a man sexy for me i think their brains too i am um a type of person that I am not really there's a lot of gorgeous men that I have encountered now from modeling and outside modeling you know but for me I think sexy is when a man is have a lot of brains like you know the typical thing is like very smart guy that I can talk forever for like you know when you're doing your road trips I can talk to them or when we're having a dinner I can talk to them or maybe we can have I'm not a camper but some people like if I go to a park or something in the beach at least I can talk to them you know I don't like I mean it's not that I don't like I am not like a type of person that liking those boring type of men but I think I love the intelligence or a man that can offer to me with his brain. Nice. All right, fellas, all, all you smart guys out there. Yes, hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is, uh, hello, everybody. It is time for the quick game where we like to give our guests a chance to run sure. through some entertaining questions. Oh okay, you got this. this. You, you yeah. are going to do fine. All right, here we go. Don't don't think about it. Just quick answer. Don't don't overthink it. Um, what type of milk do you put in your cereal? <laughs> okay. Strawberries. Yeah. Berries. Yeah. What type of? I'm sorry. What? Oh, well, what type of milk? Skim milk, whole milk, vitamin D. Oh, almond milk. Almond milk. Okay. Cereal? Yes. Yeah. Almond. Um, do you believe in Santa Claus? Oh, yes. I love Santa Claus. 
It's so cute. They have a big belly, you know. <laughs> I love there... guys with big belly. Hi, guys. Oh, man. So... <laughs> belly there. <laughs> Smart guys with big bellies suddenly got like so so excited all of a sudden. <laughs> um, Belly, yeah. If there's yes. a spider in your, if there's it's a spider smart. in your house, do you kill it or set it free? Set it free. Ooh, I I gotta kill it. Um, <laughs> no, don't what? kill it. I know they say it's bad luck or something like that, but what's one thing you could eat every night for a week? Sushi. It's my favorite um, sushi. Would you go to a movie alone? Yes, I did that one time. When was the last time you stayed up past 4 o'clock in the morning? Yesterday, last night. <laughs> Look at that. And she still made time for the interview, everybody. She's awesome. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite Harry Potter character? Um, I like Harry. I want to be like Harry, but in a um, character. I like the, the magic, you know. I mean, sometimes I don't believe magic, but I love that type of magic. Do you own a bicycle? No. Not at the moment, but I want one. On a scale of one to ten, how much do you enjoy garlic? Six. <laughs> um, what size bed do you prefer? Queen size bed. And who inspires you? My mom. You know, I swear, like 90% of our guests all say their mom. Yes, my mom is awesome. She's my forever, I think. Yes. Dads, you're not doing shit out there. No, <laughs> <laughs> my mom, I think my mom, really every time like she told me I'm so proud of you, it made me cry. Because it's, um, I think, part of our culture that our mother will be happy for what we do. I mean, we do for now. Like, you know. That's pretty cool. Yep. Uh, a mother is a reflection of us, I think. I'm pretty sure, for sure, you. I'm not sure who inspires you, but, you know. Ooh. Well, you know, no guest has ever flipped the question back on me like that. Yes. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, wow. I am, um, I mean, my mom is, is very important. I, I owe so much of, so much of, my concept of right and wrong, I think. Mm -hmm. um, even though my mother's standard of right and wrong is a lot higher than mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think my, um, I think my legitimate concern for people I get from my mother. Awesome. You know, I my think, mother. Yeah. My mother is very one, very much one, very much somebody who. Um, believes in all people being respected and you know how you talk to people and and my mother was very formal like if you got up in the morning and didn't say good morning or hi first oh my mother would have let you have it she's very much about you say hi to people you say goodbye to people you know so but i mean I, i've had friends and stuff who've inspired me and taught me a lot so yeah i'm uh you know i'm like a big old stew okay i made up a bunch of different people's lessons <laughs> that for sure like for me it's like oh sorry no no go ahead go ahead I, I mean for me it's like i think when i was before like when i were in the philippines i think my mom teach me how to respect people and how to respect myself as you can see i mean i don't know how can we say what is an influencer means like you can be influencer in fitness or you can be influencer and like you know what is sexy like your question earlier is what is sexy for you what is sexy part of yourself kind of like that thing some people like oh this is sexy part but i think my mom is like makes me like stay who you are she always taught me that way like stay who you are make sure that you will not hurt other people and that's why where I am now, I'm so 
blessed and I'm glad that my mom taught me how to be myself and respect others. But first, See, you have to respect yourself. And I guess that makes your mom an influencer. Yes. <laughs> my mom is an influencer. She loves to sing. Oh my God. She also have, um, she don't have social media like Instagram, but she, her Facebook is funny. She's amazing. Good people, sexy people. That wraps up our interview with the international, the worldly, and the very wise Kay Cochran. Kay, thank you so much for making time to join us this evening. Thank you so much. I'm so happy. Thank you. Folks, that wraps up our, uh, our show. And Kay, one more time, let people know where to find you. Again, um, people out there, friends, or people who are going to listen to this podcast or interview, you can found me or find me in Instagram, which is Kay Palma Goite, or you can even search me in Google as Kay Cochran, and then in the next few months, hopefully I can have one billboard in Chicago. We look forward to that. Kay, thank you very much. We'll see you soon. Thank you, and have a good night. What if you could be a better player for the cost of one more cup of coffee a month? Get access to a growing library of lit erotica, behind the scenes action, and player's guides with tips on drinking, cooking, fitness, dating, sex, and life after dark. Low tier rate while offer lasts. Patreon.com. Game on with Jack.